Right, a couple of weeks ago I got this excellent piece of equipment and in between other videos and working in the workshop I've been studying how to use this one and actually getting used to it. It's the Feutech G6 Plus and it's a 3-axis stabilised handheld gimbal for cameras. And I've got this one to actually help improve my videos when I'm out and about. It comes in this box here and this excellent carry case with the handle on the top here. And in the case we have this zip up section here with the warranty card and instruction manual plus a USB cable and then in the main section here we have the gimbal, two boxes of accessories and the battery. And this is actually the first gimbal that I've actually used and I spent a lot of time online looking at the various types of gimbals and the different makes and I actually chose this one because of its excellent versatility. Plus I was totally impressed when I saw other people using it online. And when I say versatility, what I mean with this one is that it can actually take many different types of cameras, plus it can also be used with a smartphone. And it does come with an adapter so you can actually mount the cell phone on this one, but also with the app you can actually connect the cell phone to this one through the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And once the cell phone is actually connected to it, you can use it anywhere remotely to actually operate this one, which is absolutely excellent. And the actual app that connects to this one with the phone is dead easy to actually work out. You can actually change all the different settings on the gimbal with that one. And I, like I say, I'm only new to gimbals at the moment, but I actually found that app really easy to use. And you can download the apps directly off the instruction manual or the quick start guide. Plus you can also download the G6 Plus how to use guide or the G6 Plus detailed manual. So this is all the accessories out of the case and the two boxes. This is the camera mounting plate. It's made of thick aluminium anodized black it's high quality and this is the gopro type adapter or a mounting adapter i use an action camera but it's a nikon key mission 170 you have two quarter unc standard tripod mount screws which you screw into these on the actual um, gimbal and then you have the phone adapter and this is preset sprung loaded so you actually just put your camera in between that one there's actually no tightening needed at all it's really well made it's a nice weighty little unit there and again thick aluminium and really high quality and then you get one Feotech 26650 lithium ion battery type it's 3.6 volts and it's 5000 milliamp hour battery and if you actually buy extra batteries for this unit always make sure that you buy the Feotech type or Feotech make because there's a difference from the ordinary 26650 um, batteries these are 3.7 volts but not only um, is there that difference there's a difference in length. I found that the Feotech batteries are quite a bit shorter than standard type ones 
and therefore if you go to put a standard type uh, 26650 battery in this one there's a high possibility of actually bending the uh, contacts at the end there because it's such a tight fit. So the battery compartment here unscrews and on the underside of that one there's a quarter inch UNC standard tripod socket which is excellent. The battery goes in the plus side to the top and you can see there um, that's the Fayotech one that's already um, flush with the end face there. If you were to put one of those um, ordinary type 26650 batteries in there it does protrude from this end and when you actually look down inside the unit it's got special contacts and that's why I say always buy the Fayotech batteries they're just the right fit for this gimbal. So on the camera mounting plate there's a thread part in each of the slots at one end so you screw one of the tripod um, screws into that one and when it goes through you can slide it up and down the slot. Plus there's also another slotted mounting plate on the top of the gimbal for the other screw if you need that one. The USB charging sockets on this side under this little rubber cover which you pull out with your nail. And it's most important to give it a full charge before use. Another important thing to remember is when it's fully charged don't actually turn the unit on until you've put the camera on the top of the gimbal and balanced it. And so far I've only tried the um, gimbal with a bridge camera and my Nikon Key Mission 170 action camera which I'm going to be using today. So screw the plate onto that one. I did find that um, when I actually used the GoPro type um, adapter screwed onto this plate and the camera on the top of that one, that's this one here, that I did get um, quite a bit of vibration with that one so I found that it's much better screwed directly onto the actual mounting plate. And then before putting the mounting plate onto the gimbal make sure that it's in the correct orientation and then slide that mounting plate into the dovetail and it does actually click home so it can't actually fall out until you actually press the button on this side here so that's a good safety feature for your camera and then you can lock it up on the um, lever here that way so the plates locked onto there at the moment and I'd just like to show you here another reason why I actually chose this gimbal when you're actually using the camera on the gimbal like this it's made in such a way that none of the actual workings of the gimbal cover up the viewing screen on your camera like some other gimbals do. So the next thing is to actually balance the camera on the gimbal and after you've done it a few times and got used to it you can actually uh, do that whilst holding the gimbal on its own but at first it is actually best to actually mount it on a tabletop tripod and that's the actual easiest method of actually getting used to doing the adjustments. So now it's mounted on the tabletop tripod. It's just a low cost one, but you can actually get a proper gimbal tabletop tripod. And that also serves as an extension for the handle, making it a bit longer. So it's well worth getting one of those and I've ordered one of those. And then it's a simple method really. You loosen these collars here to make the adjustment. So loosen that one at the moment like that and then I slide the 
gimbal that way a bit until it's balanced like that and you do the same with this vertical arm here and then if it's out of balance um, I'll just show you there like if it was tipping forward a bit like that all as you do is bring the slider plate or the mounting plate back a bit and lock it up until it's basically balanced like that so this adjustment on the vertical arm here if you had it out that way it would tip forward like that And you can see there it's fairly straightforward to actually do that. When I first got it I found it a little bit awkward but after a little while you get really used to doing it and there's a very fine adjustment. You can actually just move it maybe one millimeter one way and it makes all the difference. And that there is perfectly balanced before I turn it on. And the nearer you get it to a perfect balance like that, the less work the motors have to do and therefore the battery lasts longer and there's less chance of any vibration when the um, motors are working. And then there's the on off button here. It's a long press on the button to turn it on. And then with the same function button you go through the various modes of operation by how many times you press that button and I think it's up to five presses for the different functions. So for example if I want to go into the lock mode I press the button once and it'll come up LK for lock and then press it again and I can go back to the panning mode and then two presses goes into the follow mode and so on and then it's a long press of that button to actually turn the unit off And when it's on like that, you can see the immediate effects of the gimbal in operation. And using the joystick, you can tilt it like that. Rotate it. And at any time there's a button on the front here um, called a trigger so you can actually press that one twice and it'll return to its normal position. And that really is an excellent feature to have on a gimbal because no matter where you are with it if you actually want to get back quickly to the start position it's just a double click on that front trigger button and it'll return. And I think I said earlier that this gimbal can actually link directly to certain makes of cameras so you can actually operate the shutter and the uh, videoing using this red button here 
and this knob on the side here but I haven't got a camera with um, that link facility so another thing with this gimbal that I like is that they've given this knob a double function if you do a long press on it you'll see gimbal come up on the screen there and then you can actually use this knob to actually do the various um, different joystick functions which is excellent so if I press it again it'll go the other way press it again and you've got the tilt mode and again with this knob when you've actually turned it um, say quite a distance or whatever or any distance really if you quickly want to get back again use the trigger mode on the front again a double press and again it'll return so I'll turn the gimbal round now and show you that one that's the trigger it's a nice size there and then you have adjustment with this slide uh, button on here so you can actually make adjustment that way so if you do use that one to tilt it up or whatever again you can press the trigger button twice and it'll return again so I've already downloaded the app onto my phone from the quick setup guide and it's called Feiyu On so click on that one and then it offers various different um, gimbals to actually um, connect to so this is the G6 Plus connect and it is really quick and easy to connect and then you're offered this uh, interface here the joystick is here so you can operate the gimbal with that one and the reset is this one and then you have the various different functions on the lower side here and then you can go into settings to set the different parameters or upgrade the firmware I checked mine and I have the latest version so I didn't have to download anything for the parameters you have motor strength scene joystick settings horizontal calibration auto rotation mode and restore default settings so it's an excellent app and it's dead easy for anyone to actually operate and one other function I forgot to mention on the app you have the slider control on the top here so it's all excellent stuff and it's an amazing piece of equipment it's high precision it's well made it has taken me a little time to actually get used to it the various different settings and um, the actual way it works but the more I use it the easier it's becoming and as yet I've only been out with it twice and this morning I went out along the riverside um, near where I live and now I'll show you some video clips of that walk it's a lovely place it's a river that comes off of Exmoor in North Devon and the water is crystal clear and I often see salmon and trout in this uh, river and it is really a lovely place to go and I did find that when I was shooting this video that sometimes you can actually hear the motor sound on the uh, gimbal being picked up on the camera microphone but that's because I'm not saying anything and there's very little uh, background noise apart from the birds so you wouldn't hear those motor sounds if there was a lot of background activity or whatever 
plus I haven't done any adjustments on the motor um, speeds or whatever in the settings so I don't know whether um, I can actually cut that sound out altogether by actually adjusting something.